Have you ever been driving down the highway and noticed that the rocks on opposite sides of the road appeared identical? Generally speaking, they are, in fact, identical because they are the same rocks. Take, for example, these strata of sedimentary rocks exposed at Sidling Hill in Washington County of Western Maryland. Beginning in the 1870s, a number of railroad tunnels were blasted through the hill. After a century, the Highway Administration decided to cut a deep trench through the hill and build this road in their place, Interstate 68. In the process, they exposed the structure shown in this photograph, called a syncline. A syncline is a trough formed from the folding of strata, which dip down toward the middle. The youngest rocks occur in the middle of the syncline, inside of the trough. This specific syncline consists of sandstone, siltstone, mudstone, shale, conglomerate, and even coal strata dating back to the Mississippian period of Earth history. There are about 350 million years old. Today, Sidling Hill is perhaps one of the best places to develop the skills necessary to think about rocks in three dimensions. Three-dimensional thinking is necessary for stratigraphy. Simply put, stratigraphy is the science and the study of strata. There are three aspects to stratigraphy, characterizing the spatial relationships of sedimentary layers, using those relationships to study the ancient environmental changes on Earth, and assigning names to those strata so they are easier to recognize and discuss. Stratigraphy often involves the use of a special type of geologic cross-section called a stratigraphic column or strat column. These sections are specially prepared for visualizing vertical variation and relative positions of strata at a specific site. As in other geologic sections, the y-axis is a vertical position, and pattern fill illustrates lithology. Importantly, the x-axis illustrates grain size. It indicates whether the grains are clay, silt, sand, pebble, or cobble-sized. Strat columns are the basis for an important geologic technique called stratigraphic correlation. It is the process of determining the equivalence of stratigraphic units at different sites based on a sequence of events inferred from strat columns. Events include lithological changes, fossils, and structural features, like erosional surfaces. The geologic section below can be correlated with each other because they contain the same sequence of events, going up section from oldest to youngest, or down section going from youngest to oldest strata. Think about the lithological changes fossils, and structural features of a strat column like a fingerprint. The goal of stratigraphic correlation is to identify the similarities among strat columns and demonstrate that they represent the same sequence of events. They have the same fingerprint. The overarching goal of stratigraphic correlation is to identify time equivalent rocks or rocks and strata that formed at the same time, albeit at different sites. For this reason, lines of correlation should never cross each other, like those shown here. That said, two sections can be correlated even if they differ to a degree in terms of the thicknesses and lithologies of the strata and the presence and absence of various structures. 
the sequence of events may otherwise be the same. Differences may exist due to the variation that exists among depositional environments. Indeed, some lithologies are not deposited everywhere. Think back to the principles of original horizontality and lateral continuity. Strata are laid down as horizontal layers that extend outward over laterally continuous areas until they butt up against a structure or thin out to nothing. When a stratum thins out to nothing between strat columns, we say that it pinches out. There are various approaches to stratigraphy. Lithostratigraphy is the correlation of geologic sections based on the lithologies and facies of their strata. This approach contrasts with biostratigraphy, which is focused on correlation based on the presence of fossils, and chronostratigraphy, which relies on absolute dating. Because lithostratigraphy is based on the lithologies and facies of rocks, it is the best approach to studying changes in depositional environments over time. This application of lithostratigraphy relies on a principle called Walther's Law, or the principle of correlation of facies. According to this principle, vertically adjacent strata were deposited in environments that were formerly horizontally adjacent to each other. This image illustrates Walther's Law, showing you changes in facies from shallow to deep water in the ocean, and how these facies would appear in a stratigraphic column. Walther's Law helps us to look at rocks and identify past sea level changes. Maximum transgression the peak of sea level rise occurs where the finest sediment reaches the farthest landward position. Maximum regression, the lowest sea level, occurs when the coarsest sediment reaches the farthest seaward position. Because of Walther's law, we can see that sea level change follows a cycle. Between maximum transgression and maximum regression, it is a time of sea level fall, and a regressive sequence is deposited that generally becomes coarser upsection. Between maximum regression and maximum transgression, it is a time of sea level rise, and a transgressive sequence is deposited that generally becomes more fine-grained upsection. This cycle repeats itself, laying alternating layers of regressive and transgressive sequences. In any case, when strata can be correlated across sections, they receive names. Indeed, there is a hierarchical system for naming, organizing, and assigning stratigraphic units. A stratigraphic unit is a volume of rock which can be traced laterally across a region with distinctive lithological and paleontological characteristics. A unit is mappable and distinct from all others. The smallest stratigraphic unit is a single stratum or layer, usually called a bed. It does not usually receive a name. Various beds are grouped together into members such that all beds in the member have identical lithology. Members of similar related but not identical lithology are grouped together into formations. Formations, in turn, are grouped into larger groups and supergroups. Each member, formation, group, and supergroup has a name. Stratigraphic units across the world can be correlated with each other based on their lithologies, fossils, and ages. When two stratigraphic units can be correlated, it means that those strata were laid down or deposited at the same time. When stratigraphic units can be correlated globally, 
They are organized into larger chronostratigraphic units, or bodies of rock representing intervals of time in Earth's past. Groups and supergroups, which can be correlated, make up globally recognizable stages, which are hierarchically organized into series, systems, erythems, and eonothems. Chronostratigraphic units correspond to geochronological units, or time intervals. Whereas the chronostratigraphic units are bodies of rock that exist today, geochronological units are time intervals that transpired in the past. The geochronological units are, from smallest to largest, the following, ages, epochs, periods, eras, and eons. Eons were the longest time intervals, ages were the shortest. Consider the Jurassic. The Jurassic is both a chronostratigraphic system and a geochronological time period. A geologist can study rocks of the Jurassic system, which were deposited 180 million years ago during the Jurassic period. A paleontologist can collect dinosaur fossils from the Jurassic system and learn about an animal that lived 180 million years ago during the Jurassic period. Stratigraphic correlation has allowed geologists to develop and formalize a geologic time scale, a system of chronological dating that relates rocks to time. Importantly, this timescale is the means to studying the historical rock record and understanding Earth history. And you'll learn more about it as you continue your learning in historical geology. In the meantime, on your next road trip, take notice of the rocks along the way. You never know what sort of stratigraphic relationships you might just see.